What's going on there, folks? Good evening. How's everyone doing out here on this beautiful Sunday night? Uh, it is March 12th, 2023, about 9.30 p.m. here along the West Coast with, of course, the adjusted time um, time adjustment from this morning. Lost an hour of sleep. Kind of feeling that. Latest earthquake activity out here shows a 1.1 earthquake into the West Coast area. Latest quake on the map. All right, let's go ahead and get into it here with some earthquake activity. Jumping off here across uh, just to the southeast of New Zealand. Got an oddball earthquake out here away from the plate boundary. 4.7 near the uh, Chatham Rise, it looks like. Which sits over here to the east near the Chatham Islands. This earthquake here um, coming in about 10 kilometers deep. Haven't really seen too much earthquake activity out here um, in the past. So I went ahead and pulled up. Historical data here over the last 20 years, 4.5 and above. And as you can see, there's only been a handful of earthquakes out here uh, in the uh, Chatham Rise area. The last earthquake prior today was back in uh, uh, 2011, roughly to the south here. Uh, and then prior to that, 2004. So a little bit of a uh, little bit of time gap here since we've seen earthquake activity uh, within this zone. So that could be a good sign here, folks, of getting uh, ready to see some adjustment here along the uh, New Zealand area. I know we did see some movement here. Has it been over the 30-day mark? Let me see here. Uh, no, it hasn't. Just barely. <laughs> uh, we did see that 5.7 back into the uh, early part of February. About the middle part of February, actually. Valentine's Day. Um 5.7 into the Cook Strait area of New Zealand and also a little bit of movement uh, around the South Island area as well. But uh, that's about it as far as 4.5 and above goes. Up here in the Bay of Plenty, we did see a 5.0 as well. But uh, we have been noticing some 4s and some 3s across the area of the plate boundary of New Zealand. Uh, this telltale sign right here could be um, an indicator of some regional stress up against this plate boundary pointing towards something... Uh, well, far as larger scale activity goes. So keep an eye on this region of New Zealand. Again, that 4.7 coming in uh, to the Chatham Rise area. A look at the GeoNet servers here across the area. Shows that earthquake coming in as a 5.5. So a little bit of an upgrade according to the GeoNet servers. They've been, I don't know, they, they kind of elevate their magnitude slightly. I don't know why what they're you know basing it off of but uh usgs reporting that 4.7 down here and geonet servers calling it a 5.5 so that was two hours ago um into the uh just off the south coast there of uh, or the uh, east coast of south island new zealand i want to see what it looks like here across the uh the drums earthquake drums will give us a good indicator look at that that's pretty significant um, yeah, about two, three hours ago, right? Was that when it was, when it kicked up here? 1837. So that was, uh, yeah, a little bit ago, but it showed up pretty nicely across the area of the seismograph stations. And actually, actually it kind of looks like there's a double tap quake in that area. Notice that all of the seismograph stations are showing what looks like, uh, two earthquakes. So uh, we'll kind of keep an eye on that area, definitely, for some movement. Of course, it's going to show up more prominent and strongly here across the uh, southeastern coast here of the South Island, New Zealand region, showing that uh, earthquake pretty nicely. So just a heads up there for New Zealand. Um, be on guard here. Like I say, we don't get too many earthquakes out there. Could be a sign here of uh, definitely something about ready to ramp up across the area. Stay safe. All right, uh, across the area of Fiji and the Vanuatu area, last earthquake looks like near the, uh, I was going to say Bargainville. Bargainville, that sounds like a great deal. <laughs> great place to go shop shopping. Uh, what is that, Bougainville? Uh, Bougainville, hopefully. Uh, if I mispronounce that, uh, I apologize. Please correct me. I have no issues with that. 127 kilometers deep for that 5.2 there into the Solomon Sea area, there is a trench zone that sits here, a subduction zone. That's a pretty deep earthquake. So watch this area upstream and the surrounding regions here.
for some larger scale activity. Uh, prior to that, of course, deeper movement back south here to the Fiji area and the Santa Cruz Islands area. I've been noticing a little bit of uptick as well. Up north, Mariana Trench and the western edge here of the Philippine Plate all looks fairly quiet. Got one earthquake um, as we spin around uh, up around the East China Sea area. It's going to be this specific earthquake here. Looks like there was a 4.0 a little bit further to the southwest as well. Uh, a little bit of movement off the coast of Japan. But notice down here, folks, look at this. Look at this earthquake activity that's raised off of the globe. That is some goodness. That's some deep activity kicking up here um, into the area of the Java Trench southern end. 600 kilometers deep for a 3.2. Not a big earthquake, but uh, deep earthquake movement does tend to point towards some large-scale activity uh, could potentially be taking place here around this region. That's definitely uh, something going on way down there into the uh, into the uh, underneath the ground there underneath the uh, the ocean. Uh, kind of looks like it's underneath the oceanic crust there. Super deep. All right, uh, and there's nothing really showing up here across the area, as far as 4.0 and above goes. But we'll continue to watch this. Watch this region here uh, for some movement, considering that uh, deeper activity coming in right now. All right, across this area of the world, looks like a 4.2 in uh, Turkey area. Another 4.4, Eastern Turkey, 4.7 um, in Turkey as well. There's a couple different earthquakes here across the region. And of course, this is where that larger scale earthquake activity took place um, last month. And of course, aftershocks will continue for quite some time within that area. Uh, up into the Romania area has since, has seen some deeper movement as well with that 4.2. That earthquake coming in looks like early this morning, about 10 o'clock or so. No further adjustment. Let me see what we got up here. Well, it kind of looks like there has been a little bit of adjustment here to the south. Notice that uh, some smaller quake activity hovered close to the globe. Um, it's a fairly new earthquake, but nothing large scale yet within that area. Mediterranean Sea looks quiet here on the USGS map. Only a handful of quakes here further west. Very small microquakes. South America region, 5.1 coming in earlier this evening. Uh, let's go over here and see what we got. Uh, let's see, 4.7 was the last earthquake here in Peru area. Now, let me see, is this one being reported? It's a fairly new earthquake striking at... Uh, 8 11 this evening that's going to be this earthquake here quite the downgrade i would say from a 5.1 to a 4.7 the usgs reporting that 4.7 but uh, listed as a 5.1 on the emsc globe same quake though uh, with that timestamp. stamp uh, either way that's relatively deep 108 kilometers here underneath the peru region into the peru chile trench uh, prior to that, some movement, or uh, after that, I should say, some adjustment up north into the Puerto Rico area. Could be putting the squeeze here with all that deeper movement up around the Caribbean plate. Continue to watch that. Some movement off here on the Middle America Trench. The states, for the most part, uh, aside from a couple small microquakes across the Oklahoma and Texas area, looks pretty quiet there out east. Uh, I'm not really seeing anything major popping up here on the west coast either. Uh, did have that 4.4 off the Port McNeil area of Canada early this morning. Since then, uh, doesn't look like too much newer activity uh, taking place here across Northern California. Things are, uh, I don't know, they're very eerily quiet. Southern Cal, San Jacinto Fault Zone, that's about it as far as any uh, swarming activity goes. Uh, no major adjustment to chat of in regards to earthquake activity down there. Across the Alaska region, looks like a typical day with a bunch of small microquakes across the area. And the Aleutian Trench, where the uh, Tanaga Volcano and whatnot is uh, kicking up down here. Let me see what we got as uh, far as earthquake activity goes. It looks like it's mellowed out here since about this afternoon. A little temporary pause in the earthquake swarm. The last one, two, uh, 2 2.4 there, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, my time. Still watching it, though. Swarms come and go there at volcanoes, but uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on it. 
Uh, a measly seven earthquakes here across Hawaii. Not a whole lot going on in the big uh, Pacific Ocean out there now. So yeah, definitely a couple areas to watch here, folks, with the deeper movement. Watch the areas around the northern end of the Java Trench upstream. Uh, and also New Zealand, uh, I think that's the hot spot for now with that uh, activity kicking up. Let me go back here and see what we got uh, across the volcano drums here of New Zealand. I want to see if that stirred anything up out there. It's only uh, it's only been a couple hours, but a lot of times these um, somewhat these oddball earthquakes will stir up volcanoes or put out a swarm somewhere. Uh, around the plate boundary and right now I don't see anything kicking off but still uh, don't let your guard down with that uh, you know somewhat odd earthquake out there 2011 uh, was when the last time we seen a similar earthquake there uh, off the coast of South Island like that alrighty uh, Yellowstone National Park what do we got here what do we have well, kind of looks like we got a little bit of an earthquake swarm kicking up here across the Yellowstone area. You see why I always check these raw graphs, these raw seismographs, because nothing gets reported here from the USGS on the weekends. It, that's just how it is. I don't know why. Uh, whoever is in charge says, well, I don't want anything going out, out on the weekends. We'll check the microquake activity come Monday morning. But um, yeah, nothing. Those are definitely some smaller quakes showing up on the map, but still, uh, you think something would be reported. So over the last three or four hours there, a good handful of earthquakes. Nothing big. In fact, all of these are probably below the 2.0 threshold. And it looks as though, trying to see exactly where this is centered, it's showing up pretty nicely over here around Mary Lake as well, a little bit more prominent, but some of those smaller quakes aren't. So that tells me right there, that the um, epicenter uh, epicenter appears to be here around the northwest corner of the park, showing up over here at Borehole as well. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that, see if that develops into something you know worth chatting about early in the morning. Right now, just a, a little small earthquake swarm kicking off there at Yellowstone National Park. Considering that it's been awfully quiet out here along the um, <clears throat> west coast, it's a little odd. Alrighty, let's see what else we have here, folks. Um, Alright, let's move on to space weather here from the Solar Ham site. Uh, Kevin there, 73% of his goal. Got uh, 248 supporters, me included, uh, helping him reach his goal. We definitely appreciate uh, any help that he can get to help run this website. It's very useful, very nicely laid out, and uh, I appreciate Kevin's work there. Looking at the current data here, shows flatline across the board in the solar weather department. Not a whole lot going on. We're actually below the sea level threshold. It hasn't been that way in quite a while. Uh, so we're entering into a little time period here of quietness. There are numerous sunspots across the earth facing side of the sun, but all of these are dwindling away, kind of turning, well, not really turning to dust, but um, you know, they're just fading away, so to speak. Nothing around the bend. Nothing at all. Uh, I don't see anything at all. Not even a glimmer of hope in terms of the uh, potential new sunspots. Uh, looking at the UV filter, roughly about the same. Sometimes you can see the tops of these, maybe on the far side sunspots. But right now, these things are looking pretty darn wimpy is the key. Uh, looks like 90% chance for a C flare, M flare, 10% chance. Um, X flare around one, probably way less than that. All stable regions across the sun right now, as far as the earth facing side goes. Not uh, expecting anything major coming up. Looks like maybe on the 15th there could be a little bit of adjustment here. Not for sure why, as far as a three day goes. Um. That's on the 15th. This kind of looks like it's outdated a little bit. We'll check back in the morning for this, but it appears as though uh, could be getting some elevated conditions on the 15th of March uh, when we could see a 65% chance up the higher latitudes of, uh, well, some storming. 
Not thunderstorms, but uh, solar storm activity. That means the auroras right now, almost non-existent. Pretty quiet. All right, uh, weather activity had a tornado warning down south, uh, just outside of Fresno early this morning, or uh, earlier this afternoon, I should say, and a couple other severe thunderstorms. So check out the uh, the uh, weather conditions out here there's our storm system coming in today and tonight we've got a bigger system lined up here it looks like on the uh um monday time frame monday night into tuesday when the brunt of this low pressure system brings in a eh, somewhat moderate atmospheric river here most of it's going to be aimed about the bay area southward uh, getting a quite a bit of rainfall built up there including areas of los angeles that's uh look at those rainfall rates there for los angeles area pretty impressive you guys uh gonna have all green grass green grass for everyone all right uh low pressure system will be parked over northern cal we will get some uh precipitation up here into the sacramento valley just nothing like they will be seeing down into the southern california area of course snowfall at the higher elevations as well uh, a couple days break there before we get another uh, clipper of a system uh, around the uh, towards the last week of March it looks like uh, after that kind of hard to tell um, and for that I tend to look at uh, some long range models as far as, as far as going into April and whatnot goes we can check out the assemble the EPS uh, GEPS system here we'll show you the low Anomalies here, that means low pressure, cold systems, wet. Uh, high pressure will be in the orange, which we really don't want here. I still want some rain. Uh, but we'll, we'll check it out here and see what this looks like as we put this into motion here uh, over the next few days or so. And it looks pretty, uh, I don't see any dominant ridges of high pressure building in. It looks pretty neutral uh, for low pressure systems. The only thing I see building up here towards the end of March is you know, a slow high pressure system. This is all subject to change this far out, but uh, that could spell some drying conditions out here for the West Coast with troughing over here around the eastern portion of the country. Uh, so we'll definitely keep an eye on that here towards the end of March. I know we're getting into April. This time last year was probably 80 degrees. I had a nice suntan already, and um, I think I I think I even set up the swimming pool. Had the kids swimming in it uh, this time last year. But, uh, hey, I'm not going to complain because pretty soon it's going to be 110, 115 degrees or so um, here in Northern California. Just It cooks out here. All right, uh, see if we got any strange events going on with the buoys out here across the globe. I don't see anything major. No doom and gloom. No fear-mongering potential that uh, a lot of folks tend to use out here. But, uh, yeah, nothing. Zip zero. Alrighty, guys. I am going to uh, I'm gonna jump off here. Hope everyone enjoys the rest of their uh, their weekend. There's an hour left, depending on where you're at. Take care. Stay safe out there. Also, the seismographs here are intermittent uh, in terms of the data coming in right now. And sometimes it does that. We'll just uh, leave them up, and hopefully they'll reset them in the morning once they get to the uh, seismos that tend to they go out on occasion so we'll just we'll wait for them to come up all right guys have a good night peace out take care we'll catch you guys later